Hello and welcome to Joe Loves Linux. Today I want to show you a fantastic panel for Linux. It is called Tint2 and many users will install Tint2 in combination with the window manager open box. But it is also possible to integrate it in any desktop environment. Although you don't have to because every desktop environment provides a panel which fits perfectly into the desktop environment. That being said, I think Tintu is a very good alternative because there are so many configuration possibilities. I will show you a few examples in this video. So stay tuned. So here you can see Tintu as it is shipped with uh, Sparky Linux with Openbox. It is pre-configured, but you can do whatever you like with this panel. Let's open the configuration menu. You can do that here and click Tint to Settings or you can go to the menu Settings and here you also can find Tint to Settings Panel Configurator. Now uh, you can see there are some panels pre-configured and you can uh, choose whatever you like. Uh, this is very easy. You just have to click to one of the panels and you will get it. But this is not what I want to show you because this is too easy for a video. Now let's go into edit the selected theme and click this button here. And now you can configure your Tint 2 panel just as you like. You can see here Gradient and I show you what you can do with Gradient uh, a little bit later. But now let's go to Panel first because I want to change the size so you can see better what I am doing. Here you have the size 32 pixels and I change that to let's say 50. And then you have to click Apply and you see the panel is much bigger now. The first thing you can do is to change the position of the panel. Now it is at the bottom, but you can change it to the top position, to the left or to the right. Let's apply this and you see the panel now is at the top. I will change that again. So here you see the background of the panel. It is gray and maybe you don't like that it is gray. So let's go to backgrounds and see what we have here. The background here is the active desktop name. You can name uh, the background just as you like. You can add another or you can remove one that you don't like. And here you have a pre-configured backgrounds. It is very easy to change the color of that. You go to fill color. Now let's say we want to have a blue panel. Let's change that. Here we have nice blue. OK. And now let's apply this. As you can see, this doesn't change the panel itself because now we have configured the background theme. Now we have to go into panel and choose active desktop name because this is the name of the background we just configured. And now we apply this. And here we are, we have a blue panel. So this is the background theme, what you do in here. And this is where you want to use the background theme. At the beginning of the video, I said that I want to show you what you can do with gradients. In this case, the color of the panel would change gradually from red to gray. It will start here at the left with red and then gradually will change to gray. So this is the gradient I pre-configured before I started the video. And now I go again to backgrounds and here to gradient and you see there is none. But 
as I pre-configured another gradient, I can choose that here. So and now I can apply that. And as you can see, what happens, we have uh, the gradient here from red to gray. I turn that off again, to none, and apply, and here you see it's blue again. And if I don't like the blue color, well, I change it back to 84, 84, 84. If you know the color name, it is very easy to define the color here. And now apply, and it's gray again. Now let's go to the task buttons. These are the task buttons. Here you can see for example, what window is open or what application runs. So you can do many things here. For example, you can see here is a text and here is an icon. And I do not need the icon because it does not provide any useful information for me. So I click here, show icon, apply and the icon disappears. And now I think we have much space for the text available and so we can increase the size of the font. Now let's see where we can do that. Here is font and it's sans 8. And uh, I think 8 is not big enough for me. So let's say 10 maybe is right. And here you see it's much bigger. But this is not all. If you don't like the white color here on the task button, you can change that. And this is really a thing you cannot do on every panel. Just try to change the color of the fonts in the GNOME top panel. Good luck! In Tint 2 this is very simple. Let's say you want it yellow. I know you would not like a yellow color here, but I choose that color so that you can see the effect. Now it's yellow, OK, and now apply and you see it's yellow. This is not exactly the color I would choose, but feel free to experiment uh, what may look cool and funny. Now let's go to taskbar. And I think if you don't use many desktops, you would not need here desktop 1 uh, because this is wasted space. So show desktop name, apply and it disappears and there is more space on your panel. For me this would not be a good solution because I usually uh, have 1 to 4 uh, workspaces. So I activate this again and apply and here you also can change the font size. Now let's have a look at the launchers. Here are the launchers. Uh, I showed you that. That leads us to applications. This leads us to the file manager and here to the Alex terminal and this is uh, application starter. And here you can see what applications are selected. These four I just showed you. And here you can see what you can add. You do that with the arrows here. Now I think since we changed uh, the size of the panel, we should also change the icon size here because it's a little bit too small. We have an uh, icon size here, um, 25. And now let's see what we can do. I think 40 would be good. Apply. And here you can see it's much bigger now and it fits better to the panel. And here you can see the background of the icons here is different to the background of the panel. But we can easily change that. Apply and now it's the same. We also can add some opacity to the icons. Let's do that here. Now it's 100. Let's see what happens if we change that to 42, for example, and here you can see we have some opacity. Let's change that again to 100, because I think there is no reason to change that uh, for me, because this is not my kind of style. 
And you also can change the icon theme here. Now this is Tilla. And uh, we also have Gnome or Advaita if you prefer that. This depends on what icons are installed on your system. Now let's look at the clock here. You see, this is a clock and here is the date. You can configure that here. Click on clock and here you see the first line format. This is the time and the second line format is the date. Percent H means the hour and percent M means minute. And now you see the second line shown in smaller fonts. You can change that here. And you see font first line sans bold 8 and font second line sans and not bold in 7. And if you say, okay, this is too small for my eyes, uh, you can change that. And let's do that and say so that you can see it, what I'm doing, uh, sans 10. Apply. And now you see it's much bigger than the time because the time is in 8. It's so much you can do with Tint 2. I, I cannot show it in one video. Experiment, uh, check it out, and then you will see if you like it or not. So have a good day and bye-bye. I see you.